All right, I'm actually, you know, particularly excited about this today. Um, uh, I think what uh, Leonardo is going to the the group that Leonardo rep is representing here today, and the work that this group is doing is super relevant to conversations that are uh, like really taking precedence right now. Um, I know, uh, and my, you know, my own capacity at the the MBA working through some of this technology is, uh, you know, probably priority, you know, star. Um, uh, uh, and um, so uh, he is with the Moving Picture Audio and Data Coding by Artificial Intelligence, which is a um, not for profit uh, established about two and a half years ago to develop data coding standards that that may interact with artificial intelligence. So uh, what I'm going to do I uh, here is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to go on mute. Leonardo, go ahead and uh, share your screen now. And I just- This is our presentation. And thank you for the introduction about uh, uh, who we are. Okay. so. Um, uh, as um, has been said, uh, we are a standard body dedicated to data coding. Um, the name is Moving Picture Audio Data Coding by Artificial Intelligence. We are an international, unaffiliated, not for profit standard development organization, and we develop AI based data coding standards. Uh, this is the technical part of it. The uh, other part is uh, that uh, we try and attach to our standards uh, clear IP. Um, IP rights licensing frameworks. So what did we, uh, did we do um, so far? We have developed a, um, a foundational standard on, um, on AI framework. I will say a few words about it. Uh, another on the governance of the Empire ecosystem. And we have here a list of, uh, of technical specification and technical report that we have uh, produced. Uh, one is about audio enhancement. <clears throat> Another one is on financial data, prediction of the company performance, um, conversation, uh, human machine conversation based on multimodal uh, technologies, um, neural network watermarking, and then something about uh, the metaverse model that I will have time to say more uh, during this time. Uh, so what are we doing um, right now? We are extending two of our standards. Uh, one, uh, we have just produced a second version, um, which is the um, context-based audio enhancement. We are developing avatar representation and animation. I will say two words about it. Um, we are working on the architecture before we had a functionalities and functionality profile. And we are having um, a few explorations that um, some, of, some of them very soon should be, um, become either um, uh, technical report or um, call for technologies. Um, just for your information that we have close relationship with IEEE and three of our standards have been um, adopted by IEEE without modification and two are on, on their way. So this uh, slide is about uh, the process that uh, we, we adopt. Um, so we try to be as open as possible and on the other hand to be as, as close as is needed. So we have three stages in our process. When the proposals are made, the use cases are studied, functional requirements are developed. This is absolutely open to anybody. Uh, we only hold uh, um, uh, online meetings and everybody is welcome to attend uh, our discussion on these phases. But when the functional requirements are ready, then we have uh, we work on commercial requirements, call for technologies, standard development. Uh, all this is done by the members. Then before a standard is ready to publication, it's published for community comments. And then we have both the technical specification, the reference software, conformance testing, and performance assessment. This is our process. So two words about what we do to make a standard accessible and timely available. Before we initiate the standard, we adopt a framework license that is a license, but actually not a license because it doesn't have the important things, which is values, dollars, percentage, dates, and so on. But the framework license declares that the eventual license that of course can only be produced when the standard is developed, will be issued at a price comparable with similar standard technologies 
and not after products are on the market. So this is a response of two key needs. How much does it cost and when will I have it? Then during the development, uh, uh, each contribution affirms the fact that uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the technology will be uh, licensed according to the frame or license. And after the development, uh, the members uh, hold the, holding IP in the stand that select the preferred patent pool administrator and we facilitated that process when, when needed. Okay, I have been asked to give uh, um, something about some ideas about the standard that we have developed here is, uh, is what uh, I, uh, I will do in the next few slides. So the first one, which is very foundational, uh, reflects our attitude. Um, so uh, AI is a great technology, but the monolithic and obscure AI application are not in the interest of the, of the use of this, uh, of this application. Therefore, as to the extent possible, we tried and partitioned um, larger um, application into components. Uh, we define the interfaces and the functionality of the components. And here is the environment that we have specified, including the APIs and the, the JSON uh, files that are used to, um, to describe. Uh, the workflow and uh, the um, AI module um, that we have developed in the first standard. Um, this is something we are working on, um, on AI health. So the idea is that you have uh, an, um, an application on your uh, mobile phone, uh, collecting data, processing data. These are passed to a central system that also um, uh, operates uh, data. Then from time to time, uh, the, um, the models are collected and, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> redistributed um, with federated learning. Um, this is another uh, important um, um, element. Um, we don't have a standard yet for this, but we're very close to publishing it. It's what we call personal status. A personal status is, I mean, the, the element that are inside yourself that uh, one way or another drive your, uh, your activities. Uh, and actually, are very, they define what, what also what you are. So we have uh, uh, three, um, three uh, factors, uh, that is how we call. Um, one is emotion, another is cognitive state, and another is uh, social attitude. So this is about how we can extract, and I mean, all this uh, AI modules, of course, are, are based on, um, on, on AI technologies. Um, and the, from um, text, from speech, from face, and from body, um, we extract the output, which is a personal state. We are defining a format for that personal state. This is uh, the other side, um, or the other end. So we have the personal um, status uh, display, which means that we have a text, we have the personal status, we have an avatar model, and based on that, we animate a, an avatar that uh, sp speaks what the text, uh, text says, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, expresses the um, personal status uh, that has been given as a input. Um, so this is a, um, an example of um, the context-based audio enhancement, which is uh, one of uh, the flagship standards. Um, so this is a user of AI in, in a clever way uh, to preserve uh, the millions of uh, open real uh, tapes um, recording music um, and uh, so this, uh, I'm not don't have the time to to explain this but what I can say is that uh, uh, every year now uh, in Cannes in France uh, there is an AI <coughs> exhibition and they uh, and this this company that has implemented these standards of ours um, has received uh, uh, the award for um, the best innovation. So this is uh, another, another area where we are working, which is about uh, um, how can a human uh, communicate in an effective way with the connected autonomous vehicle. This is part of a, of a bigger project where we consider um, four subsystems of um, a, um, a connected autonomous vehicle. This is the one that uh, concerns uh, the human uh, machine interaction. 
Um, so this is um, what we have done for company performance prediction. So essentially you, you provide data in a certain format, you have a certain number of AI modules here. And uh, as, a, as an output, you have an assessment of the organizational model, the probability of default within uh, say a, a prediction horizon and uh, the probability of business discontinuity. So this is a very exciting area that we are working on. It's called end-to-end -end video coding. And I wonder if you are familiar with video coding, you know that the latest and most performing standard is called the uh, VVC. Um, I mean, this, uh, this, um, this system that we, we are developing has already uh, exceeded the performance of VVC. Of course, uh, uh, there are a few. Uh, important uh, matters that we have to resolve that have to do with uh, uh, with complexity, power consumption, and so on. This is another area where we are taking a more conservative approach in the sense that we are um, trying to improve or, uh, uh, or replace existing video coding tool in an existing video coding standard. Uh, so we are obtaining here uh, also significant results. And again, the problem is, okay, very nice, but what is the complexity? What is the power consumption? Um, okay, two words about uh, the avatar um, representation animation. So it is a project on avatar interoperability. So we assume that we have a user on one end of, of the chain, which is represented by speech, an avatar model, and the stream that describes the animation. And then we have a user on the other side that uh, independently, uh, because they use the description and presents a speech and the avatar. Uh, we have a, a use case, uh, which is avatar-based video conference. Uh, probably I should, uh, I should skip uh, this uh, in the interest of time, but we, here we have uh, the transmitting client, the server. Then we have a, an interesting component, which is the virtual secretary. So this is supposed to be a, a virtual meeting where uh, participants are avatar representing uh, humans and we have a, a virtual secretary that is capable, of course, of understanding what the, what the avatar says, but also understand the uh, personal status. And here you see the personal status extraction and the virtual secretary uh, itself is uh, um, represented by this uh, personal status display. So this is the client. So uh, last uh, elements on, on what uh, we, we are doing. Um, is, um, I mean, th this is something that is, um, is, uh, is already happening. And this is a, a, a model of what uh, um, you see that you have a real environment here, you capture the data, you extract the features, you interpret the features, and uh, based on that, uh, you, you decide an action. The action is converted into a virtual experience generation, and the virtual experience is then uh, delivered to the uh, virtual environment. Uh, but the interesting point, and this, as I say, these are things that are happening. Um, you can have exactly the same chain that brings uh, elements from the virtual environment and uh, not necessarily the one-to-one -one because we have again this action generator that decides what should be presented to the real world and how it should be presented. So this is um, um, something that we, we are going to have a call for technology pretty soon. And uh, we call um, 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 live uh, um, performance, uh, stage performance. Um, so here you see that we have uh, um, performance, performance, the performance are captured. Um, and uh, an action is generated, but you, you also have uh, the, the status of the participant. Are the participant excited or, uh, or uh, don't care? And uh, based on that, uh, we wanted to be able to um, uh, generate a, an appropriate experience in the real environment, but also in the virtual environment. So this will be, uh, this is the end of, uh, of a summary description of some of the activities that uh, we have and some of the standard that we have developed. Now let's go to uh, the Empire Metaverse model. This is a project that um, has been motivated. I think that 
probably you can share most of what uh, is written here that uh, uh, there is an interest um, and uh, this interest is uh, promises to have uh, opportunities, jobs, experiences um, that uh, we would like to have a metaverse like the web, but uh, uh, this is hard to make it happen without the standards. Um, then there are many, many disparate industries and uh, the representation here in the, um, in the metaverse standards for is a demonstration of what uh, I'm saying. Uh, and, the, and therefore interoperability cannot mean that uh, there is a, some one size of its all uh, solution. And uh, the other point is that uh, the fact that we have many, uh, many participants uh, with different requirements uh, this is not a new problem in, in standardization um, because uh, some technology only need uh, by specific industry, not by everybody. So how do you manage that problem? I mean, there is a solution for that. And the MPAI has developed a roadmap uh, built on well-tested approach, and uh, it has already de uh, delivered two technical reports and is about to start uh, the development of a technical specification. And I will say a few more about this. So the foundation of, of the roadmap. Um, I don't expect that everybody will agree with what I, I'm, I'm going to say, but, uh, um, but I think that it, it is difficult to agree on, uh, on metaverse standard for some technology that already exists. And it's even more difficult to um, to have a standard for technology that do not exist or currently having sufficient performance. And the, then of course, as I said, there are many different expectations from what the metaverse can provide. Um, and uh, well, this is where maybe some of you will disagree, but uh, you know, uh, MPAI is present in, uh, in IEEE, is present in the ITU, is, is a member of the uh, MSF and uh, and you know, our assessment is that uh, this project, this metaverse project is really difficult and the interest in the metaverse is, is not growing. Let me put it in this way. Um, therefore, our action plan is to build metaverse standards from the bottom up. So attacking the problem of metaverse interoperability. Um, I mean, as a single body, that's, that, is, that is really too big. It's harder to, um, to expect that something, some positive result will be achieved uh, uh, by, by, this, uh, by this approach. So, um, two words about interoperability. So there are two types of interoperability. One is direct, in the sense that there's a metaverse instance that is capable to talk uh, with, uh, with another metaverse instance. And then we have mediated interoperability, when uh, um, directly they cannot talk but uh, there is a, a form of conversion um, service in between that uh, allows uh, uh, them, them to talk. This, is, uh, this form of conversion approach is a good solution, but it's not a, a, a generally a 100% uh, solution because uh, if the two uh, metaverse instances have incompatible data center and semantics, uh, then, then uh, you, cannot, you cannot do it and then uh, um, when you perform uh, this conversion service, which is, is conversion, uh, the delay introduced uh, may, may have a negative impact on the user experience. So this is the uh, Metaverse model roadmap. Um, we have one, which is uh, one, stand, one technical uh, report that has been uh, published, which is called the Metaverse Functionalities. Um, and this is based on the, on the idea that uh, uh, there are too many expectations from, uh, from uh, what the metaverse can provide. So let's collect the, these expectations and we call them functionalities. Then we have the metaverse functionality profile. So this is based on the notion of profile uh, well, well used uh, in the context of digital media, uh, which is a solution to the case when you cannot, you cannot have one size fits all. Therefore, you have to have an architecture of, uh, of solutions that preserve a degree of interoperability, but uh, do not burden some parties with the technology that are not of interest to them. So then we, we are working on uh, publishing a call for technologies in three weeks. This is Metaverse Architecture. And then we have uh, other 
the other uh, steps uh, of the roadmap uh, that uh, I will skip for, for the moment. So what is the content of the first uh, technical report? Set the definition, a set of assumptions. It will be too long to say which is the assumptions. Um, collection of high level use cases and the collection of uh, um, service providers. I mean, service. what kind of service provisioning uh, is needed by, by a metaverse? Um, an organized set of about 150 functionalities. So this is, uh, it's really an asset. Um, then uh, we, uh, they, we made a review of the state of the art of the main metaverse enabling technologies. And then we have analyzed what is needed uh, for an organization that uh, could, be, could claim the role of governing the uh, metaverse ecosystem. And finally, a roadmap, that is the slide that I have shown before. Um, the second um, document has been published uh, more than, a little more than a month ago. Uh, this is called functionality profiles. Again, we have revised and extended the definitions. We have a functional operation model of the metamers that is based on the notion of processes that perform actions on items or request the process to processes to perform actions on items. Uh, we have identified the first set of action item and data types. Um, and with them, we have described um, 10 use cases. Um, and then we have defined functionality profiles. And I, I will show you um, the result that we have achieved. Um, 10 uh, representative use cases have been tested against the functional operation model. And uh, we have uh, identified for initial. Uh, functionality profiles. So this is a picture that does not intend to be um, <laughs> to represent the complexity of a metaverse. And uh, I mean, the, this picture is used for for other contexts. So I don't think that we we should spend much time. So just on the right, we have uh, what we call the real world, uh, which is a subdivided in environment, and uh, we have metaverse services that generate instances. And um, the two um, services, metaverse services can uh, uh, have a degree of interoperability if certain conditions are uh, satisfied. So what uh, is uh, very simply the operation of, uh, of a you know, metaverse instance? So an action is a recognized functionality that can be performed in a, um, in a metaverse instance. Uh, for instance, you place an avatar somewhere. So that is a, that is a function, of, that's an action. Uh, item is, uh, is a data and metadata that are understood uh, in the metaverse instance where the, date, where the, the item exists. Uh, then we have process, um, which is programming metadata that can be executed in the metaverse instance. Then we have uh, metadata that may include the rights, and the rights that define the ability of a process to perform actions on items, or the possibility that an item can be subjected to an action by a process. This is what the rights is. Then we have data. Data can be important, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, based on certain, certain rule, you can import the data into the metaverse, but then, data and metadata must be converted to an item for, for being used in the metaverse instance. So then we have decided to, um, because the actions are quite a few, we have decided to make a, uh, to prefix the actions with MM, if it is an action performed inside an M in the metaverse instance or across the metaverse instances. And here you have the list of what we have identified. Then we have MU, if it is from the metaverse instance to the, uh, to the universe, to a universe environment, and um, from a, a universe environment to a metaverse instance, we prefix uh, uh, with MU. And these are the, uh, the list of the actions uh, that are related to, um, to entities that can be perceived. So this, uh, I'm not going to, to spend the time because I'm saying that uh, uh, time is running quickly. 
Um, so this is um, um, how we have used, we have developed a simple um, use case description language that can allow us to describe a, a virtual meeting. Uh, here we have virtual performance. So the usual, the usual case. So uh, um, in the AR tourist guide, the entire process of creating uh, everything and for people enjoying the, the experience. Then uh, we have a virtual dance. You have a, a, a professor that can have a haptic dance uh, with the student in, in the metaverse. Uh, virtual car dealer, where the, the, the customer can, uh, can get um, a, a, a virtual drive, a virtual test drive, uh, because, uh, um, because again, it can have a haptic experience. And then we, this is a, a connection of a project that we have. I mentioned it's connected autonomous vehicle. Uh, so a connected autonomous vehicle generates a, a metaverse instance. And then therefore, it is possible to apply the same methodology that we have uh, um, developed. So these are the profiles that we have identified. So inside we have a baseline profile, which is a simple one, managing profile that allows you to manage all the rights and so on. Then you have a, a finance profile for people who just uh, uh, need to, uh, I mean, to uh, trade uh, NFTs and, and the like. And then uh, high profile that contains everything. And we have levels. We can have an audio only um, functionality profile. Who said that the uh, metaverse should only uh, be visible? It can also be just to be heard. Uh, then we have audio visual and audio visual and haptic. So let me go to uh, then to the MPI uh, metaverse model. Um, we are talking now about what we are currently doing. The, to develop with the metaverse architecture. So um, on the um, 14th of June, we will issue a call for technologies. What is a call for technologies? It's a collection of three documents. A document that is the call that uh, describes what, what the matter is, what we want, what are the rules, the deadlines, uh, and, uh, and, and this kind of things. Then we have another document, which is functional requirements of what we're asking for. And then the frame of license, which is the specific case of the frame of license that I've described at the beginning, that it is how we uh, manage uh, the, uh, the intellectual property rights. So we plan uh, to uh, issue the three documents on the 14th of June. Um, and uh, we will likely uh, set the deadline responses to the 10th of June. We will publish uh, the, we plan to publish uh, the document for community comments in August and approve it in September. Let's see uh, the assumption that, so now I'm giving you a, a short introduction of what uh, the, um, the functional requirements uh, are. Uh, I will not talk about uh, the rest and the, even the functional requirements, uh, I, uh, they, are, they, they are not complete here for, uh, to, to keep the time. So this is assumptions. Um, so what is uh, a metaverse instance? It's a set of processes providing some or all of the following functions. To sense data from the real world, to process the sense data and produce the data, uh, say the items I, I was talking before, to produce one or more environments populated by objects that can be either digital or virtual, and the latter can be with or without autonomy, um, to process objects from the metaverse instance or potentially from other metaverse instances to affect um, the real world or the virtual world using objects in ways that are consistent with the goal. A, a, a metaverse instance has a goal. So what happens should be consistent with the goal, should be affected within the capability of the M instance. And that means that not necessarily can support 10 million simultaneous participants and within the rules that are set for the uh, metaverse instance. Then um, a metaverse is a bears an identifier, may make available the capabilities that it has and may include one or more uh, metaverse environment, each of which uh, bears an identifier, the environment, which is a subset of the metaverse is the bears and identifier may include location that have attributes, spatial and time attributes, and may require registration 
um, that is a specific to a, a specific metaverse environment. Um, so I continue with the assumption, a user can call a service and provide the data and metadata to create an item. Uh, a description of the item it is looking for. Uh, I mean, this is the search uh, we call discover. Um, then uh, it can request uh, to provide information about an item, interpretation about an item. I mean, someone is uh, speaking a language that I don't understand. Um, I can ask for an, a, a service that interprets what, what is saying. Or request uh, to display an item at a service, which is, uh, I have an item that I want to post on, um, uh, on a service. Um, so I, this is uh, the action that I have. Or to obtain right to perform actions, which is, OK, I, I, I want to be able to do something, but uh, you know I need to pay. So that is the transact um, action. Then um, we don't make any assumption. So this, this is really important. We don't make any assumption about the architecture. It can be centralized, decentralized, blockchain-based. Um, we don't make any assumption. Uh, we don't make any assumption of the identification technologies, the security technology, and most important on the data formats. For the reason that I have said, we are not uh, ready at this point in time to, uh, to standardize data formats for the metaverse. For some of them, maybe but uh, not enough of, to have uh, interoperable metaverses. So how does a, um, um, a metaverse uh, instance operate? Um, it's a process. Um, it, this is a program and metadata that can execute in, uh, in the metaverse instance. And actually is, support, is uh, supported functionality um, in the metaverse. An item is data and metadata. Data may be imported data with metadata must be formatted and metadata <coughs> may include rights. What type of processes we have? We have users. Users represent a human. And a human can be rendered in different ways. It can be a device connecting from the real world to the metaverse and from the metaverse to the real world and the services that providing functionalities of different, different types. So a few slides about processes. They execute actions if they have the rights. They hold a list of actions. And the list of action, uh, the list of items on which uh, they can perform actions, the time during which they can perform, and the location where they can be performed. The, a process can request another process to perform a, a, an, an action on an item. And um, are requested to perform an ASTI, and they, they, they do so if the requesting process has the right to perform the request and the requested process has the right to perform the actions. Um, then uh, they use a, a supported format to request and to respond, maybe allowed to um, request other process to perform actions on items, even the absence of right. So we have the, the notion of right that is crucial, but we don't impose that right that should always be present and um, may make available um, the list of action. So this is the uh, very simple um, uh, figure that describes the processes and uh, exchanging request and response. Then we have a registration and uh, identification. And uh, we have uh, um, the notion of, um, of resolution service that uh, can allow um, a, a process in the metaverse to talk to a process in another metaverse. So this is better if I use this figure. So I have a process here. I produce this request. Uh, this is sent to resolution service. The resolution service can talk to resolution service in the other metaverse and this passes the request to the process that provides a response. Um, okay, so let me, uh, let me go now to um, the functional requirements. Uh, here is a list of what uh, um, we expect uh, a pro process to do um, to um, modify the rights of a user, uh, to authenticate an item, to make an item unavailable, to create an item, uh, to, um, to change, uh, to create a new item based on an existing item, um, to 
create an entity to uh, discover, uh, to give information about an item, to interpret an item, uh, to display an item as a service, and to obtain uh, the right to perform an item, which is uh, what we have said before about getting um, um, paying in order to get something. Uh, finally, uh, we go to the um, a user can request a service to place an entity, uh, to make an entity perceptible, um, to stop making an entity perceptible, um, to place an entity and make it immediately perceptible, uh, and to forward a group of entities or an entire scene to a process. Then um, we can, a user um, can request a process to forward an item to a process, to activate a contract, to animate a model, um, and then can request a device to present an entity um, to, a, to, to the real world, to present an entity um, um, to a device and to present a scene uh, in the real world, uh, bring it to, um, to the metaverse. Can capture a scene, can forward data and metadata to a process, can store an item, can make available data and metadata of an item stored at an address. Finally, this is uh, my, my last slide. So this is a, a, a short view of uh, our uh, roadmap. Here we are saying that uh, with the um, first milestone, we have defined the scope of the metaverse. With milestone two, we have uh, uh, validated the operation model and we have defined the sum um, profiles. Uh, with uh, the next milestone, we wanted to be able to enable um, the, the development of, instance, of metaverse instances that are not uh, unfortunately interoperable because we don't have uh, the data semantics uh, for the reason that I have said. Well, with that, I uh, think I can conclude uh, just in time uh, my presentation, thanking for your attention and uh, inviting you to join uh, MPAI because we are having a lot of fun uh, while we build the future. Thank you so much, Leonardo. That was um, uh, incredibly interesting. Um, I, I love a good complex, uh, um, you know, uh, functional diagram. So your your presentation really um, uh, spoke to me. Um, I'd love to open uh, the room up to questions. And actually, I'll start with one. Leonardo, I think it's on slide 33. Um, you had indicated that there was some, there was like a technical document or something like that that was already done. Is that is that something that you could share with our group or just generally outside of uh, MPI? Uh, maybe it was 32. It was in the 30s. Probably you you mean I mean we have two two of the, two documents yeah, yeah. that are published. Yes. Uh, we have the first one is the functionalities. And the other one is the functionality profiles. Well, this is quite a thick document. It's over 100 pages. Uh. This is uh, only 80 or so pages. Um, you go to um, mpai.community and you will search for um, MMM under the standard uh, um, tab and, uh, and you can find uh, the, uh, uh, this document that are uh, available as PDF and you can download them. Oh, that's perfect. I uh, Yes, I found it. And I'll actually drop the link right in the chat if anybody else is interested in, in finding that. Um, okay. Uh, well, that was my question answered. Uh, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and just uh, take yourself off mute and um, you know, ask away. While, while folks are uh, thinking, I'll I'll um, uh, I'll throw a, another one out there. Leonardo, we're we're just starting our work. You probably heard at the beginning. I was talking about uh, uh, setting up a um, market and uh, and uh, use case assessment 
um, as this group, because you, you, you know, your group is very deep into this process, and and you've probably figured out a lot of ways to to index and organize and synthesize this information. I wonder if you have any any uh, uh, best practices or just general advice for our committee as we're embarking on on similar work. Um, I mean, uh, working on on use cases is terribly important. So if you look at the first document of the two that we have published, there's a chapter dedicated to use cases. Uh, we explore 18 industries uh -huh. and uh, we describe uh, some of the use cases. Then in the, in the second document, we have developed a methodology to represent the use cases. And you know, you, I can tell you, you discover a lot of, of interesting things when you do this exercise. So I'm really looking forward to, um, to seeing the, uh, the use cases that you develop because uh, we will be keen on, on trying to represent your use cases, but any use cases for that, and discover if there is something that we are missing in our methodology. So this, this is something where we can have an excellent collaboration. And, I'm not asking you to accept what we, we are doing, but at the level of describing what is the need that we want to serve. Um, well, that here we can have an excellent collaboration. Yeah, that, um, I, I can't wait to dive through your documentation. Uh, it's a little, well, that'll be a little weekend reading for me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I have a question, sorry, I had to step away. Um, it's Matt here. Go ahead, Matt. So, uh, Leonardo, thank thank you very much for for coming today. Really appreciate it. And it looks like you guys have done a lot of very um, exhaustive uh, analysis in, in really a lot of different domains. If if you were to sort of distill down what MPAI does, right? Like, what what's your? Um, we saw like the you know your next steps, the roadmap. What, how do you see MPAI like fitting into the overall sort of like standards and, and um, you know, open source um, ecosystem for, for the metaverse? Like how, where, where do you see the uh, biggest value that you guys can provide? Okay, this is an excellent question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, so of course uh, we, uh, we, we don't have the least intention of, uh, uh, of defining metaverse technologies. That, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the metaverse standards for itself does not intend uh, to, to develop because this is really a big thing. Uh, we have many communities that, uh, that will be called uh, uh, into the, the, the common goal of, uh, of, the, of developing um, uh, metaverse standards. So what we are offering here is the creation of a, of a platform that allows interoperability from the bottom up. So with the um, uh, with the uh, actions and items that we have defined, and I and I uh, remind uh, everybody, uh, items of course uh, require data. I mean, an avatar must have. Uh, a, a, an avatar representation. Well, we are not addressing that. We are saying, okay, so imagine that we have an avatar. What can we do in an avatar, uh, in, in a metaverse instance with that avatar? So this is the notion of actions that we have, uh, um, we have identified. And um, we are closer to, uh, to offering um, a first set of uh, metaverse API that allows, uh, uh, allows a, a process, allows a device, allows a user to, um, to do things in the metaverse, but of course only virtually, because we don't say what the data is. We are just uh, talking about what can we do. You know, I, I have been in the standards uh, world um, in, in MPEG for, um, and I actually I have created impact as you probably know um, for 32 years, and you know we have developed great standards there. But you know many standards, too many standards. We are driven by by the IP that the participant had in the standards. 
Now, if we talk about functionality, as opposed to talking about technology, we can design a better metaverse because we can design a metaverse that does what, what it should do independently of the technologies. Then, of course, there will be a time when technology will be selected. But, and, and you know, the sooner the better, but it should happen only after we have understood what the, a metaverse should do. And this is the contribution that I think we are providing. Well, that's great. Our, so the, because I know you're, you're based in Italy, right? Uh, say again? You're, you're based in Italy? Yes. Okay. So the, the ITUT or ITU effectively um, has spun up a metaverse, uh, I guess they're calling it a task. It's a, it's a focus group on metaverse. Yeah, yeah. I've attended one meeting this morning. Okay. My morning. <laughs> Very good. So th that's something that we're just sort of finding out about here now. And um, you know, I guess after one meeting, you probably don't have a good sense of what, what they're attempting to do. But we did, like their working groups seem to be very much aligned with the Metaverse Standards Forums, working groups, the Open Metaverse Foundations, FIGS. There seems to be these very, very general areas. And so, um, you know, what, what do you see? Do you see any value? I mean, do you see value in a um, in an organization organization like ITU addressing thing? You know, addressing. You know, let me step back a sec. The metaverse is very is multi dimensional, right? And and a lot of different different domains where some have excelled, right? And and others have not excelled, and some are particularly well suited for certain industries some areas are are not well suited for for certain industries uh, an example um you know doing handling concurrency right putting uh, a thousand avatars in you know one square kilometer is not really a space that is um really deeply entrenched in and what a network provider would be concerned with, right? They're they're concerned with meeting network metrics and, and throughput and bandwidth and and so forth and like low latency. So the a lot of different organizations are are trying to address every area, right, of the metaverse, but areas where they're not fundamentally strong, right? And so how how do you see us? coming together to bring sort of the best, you know, the mixture of experts, those folks that are particularly well-versed in, in an area to, to kind of become um, yeah, sort of the leaders in, in that particular domain, right? Uh, it just, um, you know, if I look at real virtual real world integration, that's a working group four at the ITUT. Mm -hmm. um, that's that spells to me digital twins right like integrating sensors and and feeding data back into digital twins uh the industrial metaverse that kind of concept um but there's uh there's people that are particularly well suited and talented in simulations right which is you know a big part of this that may not be a part of these conversations and so with your you know your sort of mile high view of what's going on in industry. Did you have any thoughts on how we can get the specialists, the experts in front of some of these areas um, where they're not really invited? But, uh, may, may I say, I, and then I, I'm sorry if my answer will be short because I have a, another another meeting, oh, uh, another MPAI meeting, but, uh, but your question is very important. So let me let me address uh, this in this way. I have the uh, the impression that everybody is 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 trying to learn. Uh, then of course more people uh, they are they are people are more more learned than others. But you know um, when you develop a standard, more or less everybody should be on at, on the same footing. And uh, so we have to accept that, that different bodies with their tradition, with their ambitions, um, 
should have a, a time uh, when they work and understand uh, what is this, uh, this new beast. Um, so in the case of the ITU, uh, this, uh, this preliminary phase will last until December. Um, in the, in the metaverse standard form, I, I don't know. I think that, that work is already, is already happening, but not in, in developing standard, in clarifying what, uh, what this beast is and so on. So um, as I said, we should give some time for everybody to realize what uh, this is. And then hopefully there will be opportunities to exchange uh, the different vision that uh, the different um, bodies have achieved on on the matter. I I don't think there is another way to uh, to accelerate. What we uh, Empire can bring, as I said, is the fact that we know that uh, we should build the things starting from the foundations. We should not um, build the entire building at the same uh, um, from uh, at the same time. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks a lot. So with that, uh, I, uh, I beg your pardon. I, I have to leave this meeting. Thank you very much for your attention. And I do hope that there will be more opportunities to talk. As I said, on the 14th of uh, June, we will publish this call for technologies with the, the functional requirements. I mean, if there will be an opportunity to, to present more, more in detail what we are actually seeking and uh, what is the goal that we want to achieve? That that would be great, but uh, I uh, that will be your decision. And now I, I close, and I thank you very very much for uh, for um, inviting me to this meeting. Bye bye.